Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to look at classifying invertebrates. So we're going to start by looking at what we mean by an invertebrate, and then going through each of the different kind of classes or, or groups of invertebrates that are out there. Now in the previous video, we looked at um, classifying vertebrates. Um, and so where we have kind of a smaller number of groups, invertebrates are a much more diverse um, and numerous kind of group of living things on planet Earth. So there's a few more things that you're going to need to take note of. So just make sure that you're prepared for that. We're going to keep things short and sweet as much as possible. Okay, so when we're looking at an invertebrate, we're thinking about things that have no internal backbone or skeleton. Okay, so... Are all you know things that kind of fit within that definition you can see a wide range of them here in the images on the screen um, okay now for some things that there's no um, form of hard structure or backbone at all others it is an external or exoskeleton instead okay um, so here is kind of the, the, the roadmap of the, the different classes and groups of invertebrates that we can classify them into okay so we've kind of got these six main kind of kind of areas that we're gonna that we're going to look at but you can see um, that this one over here, arthropods, and this one, the worms, um, which is not a scientific definition, it's just a, a way to kind of cluster them together, can be broken down further into um, smaller groups based on other similarities. Okay, so we're going to go through each one of these in turn. But we're going to start by looking at the arthropods. Okay, so arthro relating to joints like arthritis, that arthropods, and pod is Greek for leg, um, arthropods have pairs of jointed legs. Um, they also have a hard shell or exoskeleton on the outside. Um, obviously, the, the, how strong that or tough that is depends on you know when we're comparing things like a fly to a crab. Um, that you know there's a difference there, but they all have this hard outside. Um, and the idea is that this exoskeleton or this hard shell will molt or kind of be shed as growth occurs. So they kind of crack it open and then they they, they grow and um, out of it as they grow and develop. One of the, the sub characteristics or subgroups is um, insects. Okay, so insects have a body that's in three segments: the um, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, and that they also have three pairs of legs. Um, so we're looking at things like ants and butterflies. We're looking at um, flies, grasshoppers, um, ladybird um, beetles. Okay, they're all examples of insects. A very wide and you know very diverse group. We also have you know you may not like some of these images, I tried to pick something cute down here, um, arachnids. Okay, so um, arachnids have, like spiders and ticks and scorpions, have a body in two segments. So they're kind of a combination of the head and the thorax and then an abdomen. They also have four pairs of legs or eight legs all together. Okay, so spiders, scorpions, ticks are all examples of arachnids that we might encounter. Um, then we come across crustaceans. Okay, so Crustaceans are arthropods that live in aquatic environments. So they might be underwater, they might be in kind of creek areas, they might be fully water-based, or they might be able to go on land as well. Um, so we're talking about things like crabs, we're talking about lobsters, prawns, gabbies, um, balmain bugs, all those sorts of things are all examples of crustaceans. And then the last kind of two sections which we're looking at here together are the centipedes and the millipedes. Okay, so centipedes, are, aside from, and the name suggests 100 legs, but they don't actually have 100 legs. They can have a lot less, or they can have a lot more. They're defined as having one pair of legs for every segment of their body. Uh, whereas then millipedes, which don't have a million, uh, a thousand legs, sorry, they have two pairs of legs for every body segment. Okay, that's how we would tell them apart. Now we're going to have a look at mollusks. So kind of shifting away from the arthropods altogether, mollusks. Okay, so mollusks, there's kind of three main groups we're going to look at um, here. We've got kef what's called cephalopods, or so cephalum is Greek for head, pod is foot, so it's kind of head, foot, um, so it's where their head is connected to their legs. So things like a squid, an octopus, a nautilus, um, which is this thing over here, um, are cephalopods. So their legs connected to their head structure. Gastropod is it's called stomach, foot. So things like slugs and snails are examples of that. So where their foot or their foot kind of structure is connected to their body, like a kind of their stomach or abdomen kind of area. Um, abdomen's the wrong kind of word to use, but you can I'm gonna kind of get the idea. And then we also have things like bivalves, so like pippies and clams, where they've kind of got two hard parts of a shell that are that are kind of connected together. They're open and closed to protect a soft body on the inside. Um, and 
you know, so things like the giant clam over here. So they are called bivalves. Then we come to echinoderms. Echinoderm stands for spiny skin. So it's kind of from the same word that we get echidna from, this idea of spiny, and derm is for skin. Um, so spiny skin, things like um, so, so things like sea stars and sea urchins and sea cucumbers, some of their features, they, we say they're radially symmetrical. So they, they have a, a similar kind of center point and then they're symmetrical as they kind of move out to the edges of their body. And they also have like a tube kind of foot, which is how they kind of can move around or they can attach. So something as strange as a sea urchin, you know, actually does have a way to move around. This is a crown of thorns starfish, sea cucumber, and another different type of sea star. Okay. Um, we now have the Nidarians. Now that C is silent because um, it comes from um, it comes from the Greek word to sting because the the group um, the members of this group often have stinging capabilities. They have hollow, soft bodies, so no skeleton to speak of, um, but they um, they do have this ability to sting. So you know things like a jellyfish or an anemone or a blue bottle that they have the capability to um, to sting predators or to help to protect themselves. Okay, so they're all examples of nidarians. Um, and coral polyps, which like would make up this brain coral, for example, are also nidarians. Okay, but the coral structure itself is also is a mineral thing. So it's kind of a combination of the living thing and then the non-living part as well. Now we're going to have a look at worms. Remember that we talked about worms being kind of three um, other groups um, that we, we can kind of simplify to be talking about worms. So firstly we, we call what's called annelids or segmented worms. So thinking like an earthworm here, you can see that it's got different parts to its body with this kind of like thicker bit in the middle where it's connected um, and it's a similar sort of thing over here that makes them have segments. We have talk about what's platyhelminths or flatworms. So examples um, here, so they actually have a really thin flat ribbon like body instead of round um, and in segments. And then we talk about nematodes, which are just roundworms. So they don't have segments to their body, and they've got some a slightly different internal structure, which we're not really going to worry about at the moment, um, but they have a, a round kind of cylindrical body and tapered ends um, with the mouth and then the anus at the other end. So annelids, platyhelminths, and nematodes are the three classes of worms that make up uh, that in the invertebrates. And now we're going to look at the sponges. Okay, so sponges are, um, or, or porifera, um, becomes, it's the same sort of where we get the same word porous, or things that have holes in them, um, so that they gain nutrients from the water that passes through them, that they're able to pick up these nutrients that are dissolved in the water as the water moves through their structure. Um, they've got very kind of simple bodies, but they've got a, lot, a fair bit of internal structure, which allows the, the, um, the nutrients to be picked up, so kind of they, they most of what they um, makes up their bodies inside, away from what you can see. Okay, so we looked at what is an invertebrate, thinking about things that don't have an internal skeleton or backbone. They may have an exoskeleton or they may have nothing or, or some other kind of structure, but it's not an internal skeleton. And we looked at the different classes of invertebrates. We looked at arthropods being made up of insects, arachnids, crustaceans, centipedes and millipedes. We looked at mollusks with soft bodies and hard shells, though there may be gastropods or cephalopods or bivalves. We looked at echinoderms, spiny skin with, um, you know, so with soft bodies and then this, this spines on the outside. Uh, we looked at nidarians that have the ability to sting and have no skeleton to speak of. Porifera, we're talking about um, sponges. And then worms, annelids, platyhelminths, and nematodes. All right, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.